Halloween seems pretty harmless at the surface. You put on a bunch of costumes, maybe go trick-or-treating or just to a friend's house for a house party, see everybody's costumes, enjoy some candy, enjoy some drinks, and find another reason to celebrate. But what you have to notice is everybody's doing that. There's hundreds of thousands of people in the United States, in Canada, in the Western world, and now even in Asia and other Eastern countries celebrating Halloween. And what if I told you that this generates over $10 billion in revenue annually in the US alone. Not the world, just the US. Where did this festival even come from? And how did this turn into a multi-billion dollar industry? Halloween traces its origins to over 2,000 years ago, to an ancient Celtic festival, Samhain, celebrated on October 31st. This marked the end of the harvest season and the beginning of winter, a time where they believed the boundary between the living and the dead was at its thinnest, allowing spirits to roam the earth. There would be bonfires, they would wear costumes, and offer sacrifices to appease the spirits. After the Romans conquered these territories, they blended Samhain with their own festival, particularly Feralia, which honored the dead, and Pomona, the goddess of fruit and harvest. In the 8th century, Pope Gregory III established All Saints Day on November 1st to replace pagan traditions, and the night before became known as All Hallows Eve, eventually shortened to Halloween. Immigrants from Ireland and Scotland brought Halloween to North America in the 19th century, where it began to morph into a more secular and more community-oriented holiday. The 20th century is where Halloween actually started to commercialize, particularly in the 1920s and 1930s with the mass production of costumes. Initially, like we talked about, costumes were homemade, often reflecting folklore or spooky creatures like ghosts and witches. However, companies like Ben Cooper, founded in 1937, were amongst the first to mass produce costumes, making them accessible to children and families across the US. These costumes were often inspired by popular culture like Disney characters or comic book heroes. And by the the 1950s, mass-produced Halloween costumes had become a staple of the holiday, leading to a booming costume industry, similar to the one that we see today. Candy and trick-and-treating were also not part of mainstream Halloween tradition, but after World War II, when sugar rationing was lifted, companies like Hershey and Mars aggressively marketed small, individually wrapped candies for trick-or-treaters, particularly children. So by the 1950s, we saw the commercialization of what you wear and also what you eat. The only thing left was the decoration. Initially, they were simply limited to homemade crafts like carved pumpkins or other decorations, but due to the beauty of capitalism, this was also commercialized. Retailers began to offer Halloween-themed items like paper cutouts of skeletons or witches, and also cobwebs. And now heading into the latter half of the 20th century, these three industries became the pivotal industries for Halloween. Costumes are one of the largest revenue generators during Halloween, with consumers spending approximately $3.6 billion on them alone in 2022. This market also is not just for kids anymore, by the way. Adults and even pets have become major contributors to this booming sector. Some of the biggest players here include Spirit Halloween, the largest costume retailer in the US, with over 1,400 locations in North America. They have a pop-up model, opening stores in vacant spaces for a short period of time, often making millions in just three or four months. Their revenue is estimated to be over $600 million annually, most of which comes through Halloween sales. And as a way of extracting more value, they've marketed more extravagant and more detailed Halloween costumes. In the early 20th centuries, children primarily dressed as witches, ghosts, or sometimes animals. Today, thanks to popular culture and spirit Halloween in part, costume trends have shifted drastically, with characters from blockbuster movies, TV shows, and even viral internet sensations leading the charge in recent years. For example, Spider-Man or even Stranger Things characters have been extremely popular in the last few years. And what's more is that they've also marketed these towards adults and pets. In 2022, 69% of adults said they would participate in Halloween festivities, with many spending money on costumes for themselves. These adults alone generate $1.6 billion annually for Halloween costume sales. And now we have pet costumes, a growing niche accounting for just about $700 million of total costume sales, dressing pets in costumes like pumpkins, superheroes, or even pet versions, quote-unquote, of trending characters has become an integral part of Halloween spending marketed by Spirit Halloween and other Halloween costume manufacturers. And of course, who can forget candy? By the way, if you're enjoying this video so far, smash the like button and the subscribe button if you like learning more about money, how to make more or save more, or just understand it better. Candy is now synonymous with Halloween, and the industry reaps enormous benefits from this holiday. In 2022, consumers spent $3.1 billion on Halloween candy, accounting for about 25% of the annual candy sales in the US. That is one in four candies sold was sold for Halloween. Mars, Hershey, Nestle, and other candy manufacturers make M&M, Snickers, Reese's, 
Reese's, Kit Kats, Butterfingers, you name it, with Halloween specific packaging and product sizes. Marsh and Hershey, for example, increased production of their best selling candies by 30 to 50% in preparation for this one holiday alone. To give you an idea of how much candy is consumed, according to the National Confectioners Association, 172 million people in America celebrate Halloween, and 95% of them purchase candy for the holiday. The average household spends $30 on candy, amounting to millions of pounds of sweets handed out or consumed during these festivities. I guess the bright side is that a growing niche is a healthy alternative to these candies with sugar-free and low-sugar alternatives. While this is extremely small, it's expanding with companies like Justin's and Smart Sweets making waves by offering Halloween-friendly, healthier treats. Candies are getting better, maybe having low sugar or healthier. One thing that's getting worse and even more extravagant is the decorations. From simple pumpkins to now extremely, extremely elaborate haunted mansions. Halloween decorations have grown into a $3.4 billion industry. Over the last few decades, Halloween has become one of the top holidays for home decorating, second only to Christmas in terms of spending. We've seen inflatable ghosts and spiders to high-tech haunted house setups. People invest heavily into making their homes as spooky as possible. The market for elaborate yard decorations in particular has skyrocketed, with some households spending hundreds, even thousands of dollars transforming their home into haunted attractions. I've seen products like animatronic zombies, light shows, and even fog machines becoming increasingly popular, turning suburban streets into extremely, extremely detailed spectacles. These are the high-tech decorations. The market for traditional decorations has also grown. Traditional decorations like pumpkins remain an essential part of the Halloween experience. Over 150 million pumpkins are harvested annually in the US, with many destined for these front porch displays. In 2023, Americans spent over $700 million on pumpkins alone. This just shows you the massive influence Halloween has on agriculture sectors as well. And where there's money, millions of dollars, there's also huge retailers. Home Depot and Walmart have cashed in on the trend by dedicating entire sections of their stores to Halloween decorations. And they sometimes even start as early as August, literally August. Home Depot's 12-foot skeleton became an internet sensation in 2020, selling out rapidly and sparking a trend for giant Halloween lawn ornaments. And not just physical sales, we also have online retailers. Companies like Amazon and Etsy offer everything, literally everything, costumes, decorations, do-it-yourself kits, and custom-made items. And in 2022, they projected that Halloween-related products exceeded $3 billion in online sales. We understand now that there's big industries and people are spending a lot of money on them, but how do these businesses and retailers actually get people to spend thousands of dollars on one single holiday? The answer is simple advertising. 80% of consumers report being exposed to Halloween advertising, whether through TV, ads online, in-store displays, or other forms of advertising. TV commercials historically have played a major role in promoting Halloween. Hershey, Mars, Nestle, and other brands invest heavily in Halloween-specific ads. A lot of spooky imagery, fun-sized candy, and iconic characters like the Reese's Peanut Butter Cups talking pumpkins. Target and Walmart have also spent millions of dollars on campaigns. In 2022 alone, retailers collectively spent six hundred million dollars on Halloween themed advertising to boost sales in the weeks leading up to the holiday. And now these ads are also bombarded on social media. Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest are packed with Halloween content, ranging from content inspiration to makeup tutorials and even home decoration tips. This user-generated content is essentially free advertising for brands, with consumers sharing their purchases, do-it-yourself ideas, and party setups. For example, the hashtag Halloween garnered over 19.5 billion views on TikTok. There's 8 billion people on the planet. This is twice the amount of people on Earth. And brands have caught on to this, using influencers or people with a large following on social media to further propagate their products. Influencers often create Halloween hauls, showcasing their costumes, candy, and decor, and other things that they've bought, with 35% of Halloween shoppers saying that they were influenced by social media in their purchasing decisions. Our best friends at Spirit Halloween have also tapped into this, having partnered with influencers to showcase their products and create and shareable ways. This is just advertising. Product placement is the second factor that makes it so appealing. Halloween has a lot of seasonal shelf space at any retailer. Supermarkets make up to 25% of their annual candy sales during Halloween and dedicate prominent shelf space to Halloween months. And adding on to this large shelf space, Halloween themed packaging completes the compelling sell. Candy makers like Hershey's and Mars release limited edition Halloween wrappers. And these visual cues make products more appealing during the season. Everything is Halloween themed. You feel a part of a community, you feel a part of a moment. And it's actually estimated that 60% of consumers are more likely to purchase products with Halloween-themed packaging, even if they're available in non-seasonal forms 
all year round. So essentially the Halloween packaging is the only reason they're buying a product. There's not just physical space, there's also online shelf space. We don't really have shelf space online, but we have a homepage. And during Halloween, it is all Halloween themed. Platforms like Etsy have tapped into this craze by promoting handmade or custom Halloween decorations and costumes. In 2021, Etsy reported that it saw a 38% increase in Halloween related searches compared to the previous year. And this number is going to keep on growing in the future, specifically with 65% of millennials and Gen Z using platforms like TikTok and Instagram to find Halloween related ideas. So by now you probably know that Halloween is a lot about consumption and maybe unnecessary consumption created by these brands, but there's also some positive sides when it comes to business that we have to talk about, particularly jobs. Haunted houses and other attractions, for example mazes and theme parks, have become a major part of the Halloween experience, drawing in millions of visitors and creating a seasonal economy. In the US alone, there's over 1,200 commercial haunted houses that operate during the Halloween season, generating upwards of $300 million annually. Some popular ones are Haunted Overload in New Hampshire or Netherworld in Georgia, attracting tens of thousands of visitors each year, with ticket prices from $20 to $100. The more important part is that the production of these haunted houses has become highly sophisticated. They involve professional set designers, special effects, makeup artists, and animatronics. And according to the Haunted Attraction Association, over 100,000 people are employed by haunted houses during the Halloween season. We also have major theme parks like Universal and Disney having capitalized on this, with Universal's Halloween Horror Nights alone generating over $200 million in ticket sales in 2022. They not only bring revenue to Universal, but also the surrounding area, driving demand for hotels, restaurants, and even transportation. Not just theme parks, you also have local pumpkin patches and farmers that get a seasonal lifeline through Halloween. Over 150 million pumpkins are grown in the US annually, with a significant portion sold during Halloween. Illinois is the top pumpkin producing state, growing 80% of the nation's pumpkins, contributing millions to the local agricultural economy. Farmers can earn up to $700 million in total pumpkin sales each Halloween, with additional revenue coming from activities like hayrides, corn mazes, and fall festivals hosted on their farms. A popular way for farmers to market their farms is turning them into a you-pick destination where families essentially come and pick their pumpkins directly from the field, adding a nostalgic and rural experience to their Halloween traditions. They often charge an admission fee and generate additional income through concessions and sale of other fall-related products like apple cider, caramel apples, and even gourds. This is often called as agro-tourism now and has boomed in recent years. For example, the Craven Farm in Washington draws tens of thousands of visitors during the Halloween season, creating significant revenue for the farm and also nearby businesses like restaurants, gas stations, and hotels. Not to mention, they also create those seasonal jobs that we talked about. And all these, these decorations, these festivities come together with Halloween parades and parties. Festivals, cities like New York and West Hollywood host massive Halloween parades that attract hundreds of thousands of spectators. The New York City Village Halloween Parade, which began in 1974, draws over 50,000 participants and 2 million spectators, generating millions in tourism revenue for the city. It's it's estimated that the New York City Halloween Parade brings in over $90 million in tourism revenue every single year. And it's not just big cities, small towns in the US also use Halloween as a key economic driver. Events like Salem Haunted Happenings, which celebrate the town's witch trial history, attract over 500,000 visitors annually and contribute 140 million to the local economy. And perhaps a less talked about industry, but an important one is the Halloween party industry. House parties are very common, with 33% of Americans planning to attend or host a Halloween party. This translates into spending millions on decorations, catering, and entertainment. Even event venues like bars or nightclubs frequently host Halloween parties, charging tickets anywhere from $30 all the way to $150. So now we understand that Halloween generates a lot of revenue and money for local economies and employs a ton of people. But what about the other side? What about the waste, the extreme waste generated by Halloween? Halloween is notorious for contributing to environmental waste, primarily through single-use costumes, plastic decorations, and non-recyclable candy wrappers. Cheap, mass-produced costumes, often made from synthetic materials like polyester, are worn once and then discarded, leading to a significant textile waste. According to reports, the UK alone throws away an estimated 2,000 tons of Halloween costumes each year, equivalent to around 83 million plastic bottles. Many of these are also not biodegradable, leading to an increased plastic pollution. A report in 2019 by the Fairyland Trust 
found that 83% of costumes sold in the UK are made from oil-based plastics and 7 million costumes are discarded after Halloween. This trend is often mirrored in other countries where fast fashion dominates Halloween. Plastic decorations also need to be talked about. Plastic pumpkins, skeletons, and fake spider webs are commonly used for home and yard decor, most of which are discarded after a single season. According to the Environmental Protection Agency, Americans generate 1 million extra tons of trash during the Halloween season, much of it coming from discarded decor and costumes. And who can forget candy? Candy wrappers, which are typically made from multi-layered plastic materials, are difficult to recycle. In the US, it is estimated that about 600 million pounds of candy are sold during Halloween, with a large portion of these wrapped in non-biodegradable packaging. Now, let's say you don't care about the environment, it's fine, but you have your own personal choices and decisions. What about labor practices? We need to examine how Halloween products are actually made. They're often manufactured in poor labor conditions, with a significant portion of Halloween costumes produced in countries like China, Bangladesh, or Vietnam, where labor loss can be lax and worker exploitation may be prevalent. Many workers in these factories can earn extremely low wages, work long hours, and face unsafe work conditions. In China, which produces the bulk of Halloween costumes, factory workers often earn less than $1 per hour. These issues are a broader issue of labor exploitation in the fast fashion industry in general. Investigations have revealed that some of these factories do not comply with international labor regulation. Workers work excessive overtime and are often exposed to harmful chemicals. And what's interesting in my research doing this is that there is little transparency in the supply chain of many major costume retailers, making it difficult for consumers to know exactly where their purchases are being made. Even with a lot of waste, the rampant consumerism, and shoddy labor practices, Halloween is not going anywhere anytime soon because of its large international expansion, particularly in Asian countries like Japan. The rise of Halloween in Japan has been extremely remarkable, with spending on Halloween-related activities increasing dramatically over the past decade. In 2019, Japan's Halloween market reached an estimated $1.2 billion, surpassing the country's Valentine's Day spending for the first time ever. Retailers like Don Quixote and other department stores have embraced this trend, offering elaborate costumes, decorations, and Halloween-themed products. This is also because it's perfectly in line with their cosplay culture. People like elaborate costumes in Japan, particularly in pop culture. And cities like Tokyo now host massive Halloween parades, with Shibuya street parties drawing over 1 million participants. All this to say that it's not going anywhere anytime soon, the entire world is going to celebrate it. But as a way to limit our own consumerism and as a way to save money as well, personally, that is the, I guess that is my primary motivation. And other people are noticing that as well with an increase in do-it-yourself costumes or costume swaps, even wearing costumes that you've worn before, having sustainable decorations as well with natural materials like pumpkins or hay bales that are biodegradable and less harmful to the environment. There's also new healthier alternatives to candy and ethical candy choices as well. Purchasing fair trade certified chocolate or candies, which is not the best, but it's better than purchasing something that's not fair trade, I guess. With companies like Divine Chocolate offering fair trade Halloween treats as an alternative to mainstream brands. Halloween is fun and it's totally okay to celebrate it. It's also good to be mindful of what you're consuming, why you're actually consuming it and spending money, and focus more on the community aspect and not the consumption aspect. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next one. And as always, smash the like button and the subscribe button. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. I'll see you in the next one.